Hey, Vinyl Community, Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records. Wanted to do a little video about Smithsonian Folkways vinyl releases. Uh, I thought that might be of interest to a few of you. Uh, if you're into uh, to the type of music you might hear on Folkways, which is a wide, wide variety of music. But I just recently ordered four albums from Folkways and uh, I will share those with you and do some needle drops, but I'll just talk to you a little bit about uh, Smithsonian Folkways first. You can, uh, they have a website, you can order by mail, uh, brick and mortar stores also stock Smithsonian Folkways records. Folkways started as a record label in 1948. Man started the label by the name of Moses Ash who's an immigrant from an area of Central Europe around Poland and German, present day Poland and Germany. And uh, he's always been interested in recording and the technology of recording, the technical aspects of recording and uh, regional and ethnic music, uh, all, all the diverse sounds in the world. And in 1940, he wasn't, he was like 35 years old or something like that. He went with his father and uh, they played a, paid a visit in New Jersey to Albert Einstein. And there Albert Einstein urged him when he found out more about his interest to record all the sounds in the world that he possibly could. That that would be a great endeavor. And in fact, Moses Ash made that his life's, uh, his life's journey was uh, to record so much of, of the sounds, the music and sounds of the world. And Folkways was uh, sold to the Smithsonian in 1987, I believe it was, uh, after he had passed away the year before. His family came to an agreement with the Smithsonian that they would donate the uh, record label uh, to them on the condition that they always keep the music in print. They don't let things go out of print or out of uh, pressings, or so on and so forth. And uh, it's a, well, a great agreement because it preserved so much and got reissued so much of that great music. Currently, there are 143 vinyl releases available through the Folkways website. Now, that's not including, there are tons more that are digital downloads and that are um, that are that are cds so you can get a whole lot of, of great music to, if depending on what format you prefer i tend to gravitate toward vinyl so i'm just concentrating on the vinyl right now 143 uh records available uh from folkways everything from lead belly uh, peter c pete seeger uh sonny terry and brownie mcgee uh, dave von rock uh Lucinda Williams has an album. Her first album was on Folkways, believe it or not. Uh, Clifton Chenier, uh, his son, was it C.J. Chenier? Uh, Beausoleil, Dale McClure, uh, Mary Lou Williams, all have releases on Folkways. And uh, there's, there's jazz, there's Cajun, there's Zydeco. There are children's songs, recordings. There's bluegrass, there's folk, there's, there's blues. There's a guy on there named, I believe it's Josh Spence, who's from the Bahamas. And there are two albums of his uh, guitar-based recordings on there. I think it's something I'm going to pick up uh, sooner rather than label, later. There's also uh, new releases being made by Smithsonian Folkways. Uh, recent releases include the, the Dom Fleming's uh, Black Cowboys album. Uh, Sons of Our Native Daughters, which is a, a black female uh, supergroup, I guess you'd say, of banjo players that uh, that kind of take back the uh, the uh, ownership of of the banjo, which has been out of you know out of favor in the uh, in in certain communities for a long, long time. There's also a pre-order available for Sam Bush doing. Uh, the music of John Hartford. It's going to be called Radio John, and that's coming out in about a year or a little less on vinyl. So those are some of the examples of things that you've uh, 
that you have available for. First album that I, I'll show you that I picked up of the four I picked up from Smithsonian Folkways is this one, Who's That Knocking? Bluegrass Country Music, Hazel Dickens and Alice Gerard. I won't talk a lot about this. It's from 1965. It was just reissued in October and uh, it's their first recording. And I've got a review of this particular album available. Uh, if you'll just check my, my, my videos, you'll see it there. I only did it a few days ago. And you know, Smithsonian is nonprofit and so, but Folkways has been fortunate enough to acquire a number of other record labels and bring them into the fold and uh, release and re-release many of the albums from those labels. One of those labels is R. Hooley. Uh, R. Hooley was founded in 1960 out in California uh, in an effort to, uh, to record all kinds of regional ethnic music roots type music and so much the same mission as the original folkways had and they got the the label from uh from the owner who's still living chris starkwitz s-t-r-a-c-h-w-i-t-z he's still living in the bay area of california i believe but uh that uh thanks for that mazzy by the way he was the one that was telling me that he's still with us but uh they sold in uh 2016 uh the label to smithsonian folkways so uh, these next three albums i'm going to show you all come from the r julio or Huli collection the uh these are not reissues uh, they are part of the stock. I'm sure they, you know, they sold a warehouse, a warehouse full of records when they sold, uh, sold the label to, to them. So uh, these are records that they've got in their warehouse now at Smithsonian, and uh, they are going to sell them until they run out, and hopefully they'll reissue some of them uh, if they run out of copies. This is uh, Joe Jackson in Europe, recorded in 1969, released in 1970 on R. Hooley. And uh, John Jackson is a Piedmont style blues guitarist uh, from Virginia. And he, uh, that if you're not familiar with the Piedmont style of blues, and a lot of you I'm sure are, so I'm not trying to talk down to you or anything, so just, but some people may not. Uh, more of a ragtime feel, uh, not as a, a dark and haunting sound as the blues you would get from the Delta. Uh, syncopated sound, uh, very enjoyable. Here's an example of uh, John Jackson. And I'm going to do you, uh, here's John's Ragtime. For the Piedmont Blues, let's go to the New Orleans Jazz. Another R. Hooley. Uh, Kid Thomas is the name of the album, and it's Kid Thomas Valentine and his Creole Jazz Band. This is a recording from 1959. At a, they recorded it at a radio station in New Orleans, and uh, it is traditional uh, Dixieland jazz or New Orleans traditional jazz. You know, they got the, the uh, trombone, uh, the saxophone, the uh, trumpet is what Kid Tom, uh, Thomas plays, but also the banjo, uh, drums, bass, and uh, piano. 
uh, some some excellent music here and uh, really really this is quickly is becoming my favorite uh, favorite album right now I've played this several times By the way, uh, Kid Thomas uh, was, uh, besides that band he was part of, through the 50s, 60s, and 70s, he was a part of the uh, Preservation Hall Jazz Band, uh, which is uh, well known by, by everybody, I'm sure. And the, the, the last of the four albums I picked up is uh, Wade Frug. I do not know how to pronounce that. Of course, that's a French Cajun name I suppose but Wade was a farmer in uh, in Louisiana and he learned the uh, old Cajun fiddle tunes from his father and grandfather and from others uh, others are traditional Cajun tunes that's what's playing right now and uh, this he was never a professional musician he was a house party uh, fiddler and was uh did this recording this studio recording is his only studio recording i think in 89 this came out on our Huli. and just uh, just uh, some beautiful beautiful uh cajun fiddle All right, hope you enjoyed that. Just a look at some of the things available uh, on Smithsonian's Folkways label. If you've got any interest in a wide variety of ethnic or folk or roots music, then uh, that's the place to go. And I'll just, uh, I'll leave a link down below to the vinyl selections on, on the uh, website. And I'll urge all of you to try to be kind to your neighbors, folks. Because remember, we're all neighbors. <laughs>